Page six, ragtime do -si do Oh, got some things to talk about here. There's accidentals all over the place. See, the key is C major. There's no sharps or flats, but they've got plenty of things going on. Right at the beginning, look at all those notes. In both hands, it starts with the left hand. E flat, G flat, A. Play them all together. It's a nice diminished chord, it's fine. And then we carry on with the chord. And you get that in second measure. One. Two, get them. That's really all it is. This is. First line's an introduction. And then the piece actually starts on the second line when you have that type thing. That's the piece. Going to talk about the right hand first. We've already talked about the first line, I'm not going to worry about it. Second line, rhythm, one and two and. Remember the one and two and? If I do that slowly, one and two and, three and, four and. Not bad. And that's how I figure these things out. One and two and, three and, four and. You can look at the quarter notes in the left hand, because they're straight. And you can see, lining them up, that sometimes a note in the right hand doesn't line up. It's in the middle, so you play it in the middle. So it's here. The first notes are the same. Then you got to play the D-sharp next. Then you play the left hand. Now you play the E in the right hand. Now you play them together. And that's fun. If you can get that rhythm worked out, it's all over the place. So. You're, you've got most of it already. Third line down on page six. In the first measure, we've got this typical theme that's been going on and will continue to go on. My problem is going from the second measure to the third measure. If I do two, four in the second measure, then I gotta come up to four again in the third measure. I don't care for that, so I'm suggesting this. In the first measure, you're starting out fine. For the last note of that measure, use second finger instead of third. Just, just crunch up a little. And now you can do the second measure with one three. And now you're in position to use fourth finger. And I like that much better. At the top of page seven, in the right hand, they're suggesting one two one. okay, but I just don't see any point in crossing the thumb over the thumb. I suggest you start with a three, two, three, five in that position, and then put the two on the last note. Just scratch up a little. And now three, one. You can take a pencil and put these fingerings in and try them out and experiment and see if you think. All I'm doing is avoiding crossing over the thumb, big deal. That puts me in position to play the third measure with fourth finger. And that's what I was after. I also avoided crossing over the thumb. In the third line down, in the third measure with those eighth notes, the F sharp D. Uh -uh. In the measure before you have the G, B flat, or E flat. I recommend you do the third measure 2-5-2-5 two five, two five if your hand's big enough because that thumb's doing too much again. So, and then the last measure is a thumb. So to do the last three measures of the third line, it's here. To me it's much easier than using the thumb for all that stuff. I disagree with that. Last line, first measure, they're crossing that thumb again. I, I don't care for it. I like the fingering I did at the first line on those two measures. It's a three, two, three, five, two. Then it's a three, one. Then a two, three. And then you're in position. I prefer that fingering. I really do. 
left hand left hand don't have a lot going on and you got to keep the left hand relatively soft because all the action is in the right hand that's what we want to hear so the left hand staccato throughout the only pedaling is in the first two measures I'm not going to bother to show just two measures of pedaling hopefully you can pedal two measures you're going to push the pedal down right after you play the first note and you're going to play the first two measures with the pedal down right before you play the G lift the pedal up so there's just a fraction of a second of silence because we want to break the phrase so it's that we need to hear the staccatos now watch the notes because uh, starting with the second line on page six it's here then in the next measure it's here You can finger that if you want to with a 4-1 for the C and the G. So the little finger isn't doing it all. I tend to do that typically because to me it's easier to do that than here. It's about all I had to do for the left hand. There's just not a lot to point out. It's just a matter of playing what's written slowly. Now this is a fast piece, but you're not going to learn it fast, you'll learn it slowly. So let's play it together. Now once you get the notes and the rhythms and articulation, you'll put in the dynamics. See if you can't feel something with this. For instance, over on page 7, third line down going into the fourth line. You're starting this out with a medium soft. starting the third major medium soft and then you see that crescendo arrow so you're gradually going to go up to loud in the in the third or fourth line so you're building up so you're building up to that it's, you have to feel that kind of thing but you have to practice it mechanically at first to kind of get an idea of it and then once you get accustomed to play it then you try to you turn it over to your emotions and you feel it. That turns it into music. So we're going to go really, really slow. They're saying play all the eighth notes evenly, and that's fine. Typically in ragtime, you would anyway, so it works out. So left hand's here, left hand's here. Here we go. I'll give us four counts. Let's play it together. One, two, ready, go.
Now, I don't know if there are any recordings of this anywhere, but just in case there aren't, this is how I would play it. You might play it a little differently, everybody interprets it differently, but this will give you an idea to think about.